Uh, hoy hoy, my nap fam. What's up? It's your girl T, aka the Nappy Header Jehovah, here with a highly requested video on my recommendations for mineral sunscreens. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I'll be able to get through this video because there's currently some construction going on in my garage and they're here Monday through Friday, which has definitely restricted my ability to be able to film because Monday through Friday, what I'm typically hearing is this. As you can imagine, that is tons of fun for someone who works from home and for someone whose hobby is making YouTube videos where I need to be able to record sound. Hopefully there won't be too much stopping and starting as I plow my way through these recommendations. And this is a video that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, but I wanted to give myself more time to actually test a few more options just because different formulations work for different skin types and preferences. The one thing all of these sunscreens have in common is that across the board, they are all mineral sunscreens because that is all that I use. If you're not sure what that means, it just means the actual ingredient that protects your skin from the sun will be either zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, which are minerals, as opposed to a chemical sunscreen, which uses avobenzone, homocylate, octanoxate, things like that. I prefer mineral sunscreens because one, they are better for sensitive skins, and two, they work differently. Chemical sunscreens work by absorbing the UVA and UVB rays from the sun, whereas mineral sunscreens work by actually reflecting those rays back out. This is often why people tend to claim that there will be flashback with sunscreens, especially mineral-based ones, and it's also also why so many mineral sunscreens leave a white cast, which is a big problem when you're brown. So it took me quite a long time to find sunscreens that would work for my melanated skin. And while I can't guarantee that these won't leave a cast on you, you'll really have to swatch and test them for yourself. I can say that they work for my skin and leave me cast free or almost cast free. I'm going to do these in the order of my favorite to not so favorite, but I do like and use them all. Quick sidebar, but my ride or dies know that I am a stickler for semantics and it really grinds my gears when people use the terms SPF and sunscreen interchangeably. Sunscreen refers to the actual product, the solution that you're applying to your face. SPF refers to the sun protection factor, the factor by which the sunscreen will protect your skin from UVA and UVB rays. The higher the SPF, the longer slash more rays it will block. But truth be told, the percentage of rays blocked between say an SPF of 15 and an SPF of 30 is not as much as you would think. An SPF of 30 is not blocking twice as many rays as an SPF of 15. However, because I live in Southern California, I don't really fuck with anything below an SPF of 45. I've got sun damaged skin and hyperpigmentation as it is for using SPFs that were either chemically based and or lower for years. And I think that switching to strictly mineral based sunscreens with a higher SPF has been one of the main things that has helped me reverse some of that hyperpigmentation. Let's start off with the first sunscreen, which is the one that I've been gesturing with for the last few seconds, and that is the Clinique Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Mineral Sunscreen Fluid for the Face Sensitive Skin Formula. This is a relatively new formulation. I don't think it's been out a full two years, and this is my first bottle, but it will absolutely be a repurchase. With pretty much any mineral sunscreen, you're gonna wanna shake it up, and you can probably hear it's got a little shaker ball inside. This is my favorite sunscreen because it's a great all-arounder. It works great under makeup, it works great on its own, and it leaves no white cast on my skin whatsoever. Honorable mention goes to this. When the face formula was released, Clinique also came out with this Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Mineral Sunscreen Lotion for Body also sensitive skin formula. This formula is quite a bit thicker and heavier than the face formula, but you also get a lot more product. This is a 4.2 fluid ounce container. The one for the face is only one ounce, which is the only con I have about it. I feel like for the price, you don't get much product at all. However, if you have dry skin, I feel like you could go ahead and just whack this on your face as well. I don't have dry skin, so I tend to avoid it, but this is what I use on my body if I know my skins is gonna be exposed. Both of these formulas are 100% fragrance free, which is another thing that makes me love them. I despise it when my skincare has fragrance in it because it just has no business being in there. 
Fragrance is one of the chief irritants to skin, so why companies are still putting fragrance in skincare is beyond me. Next up is the Dennis Gross Sheer Mineral Sunspray. This is also an SPF of 50. I've got this in the box still because this is actually a newer bottle. I've only been using it a couple days and I decided to hang on to the box because I knew I was going to be filming this video and I thought you guys might want to see it. This is a pump bottle formula. So you shake this one too because again it's mineral based. This one is just zinc oxide for the sun protection. And this one is great because it's very very lightweight. I use about five pumps and you're meant to apply it into your hand and then apply it to your face rather than spraying it directly on the face. I initially purchased this because I thought you would be able to spray it on the face and I thought it would be a nice way to top up my sunscreen over makeup or just when I'm out on the go. Come to find out when I read the instructions when the product arrived that uh, that's not how you're meant to use it, but I still love it. It's got a very silky, low-key, slightly oily feel as you're applying it to your skin, but I do, I do find it dries down to a sort of velvety, pretty smooth finish. It feels very nice and lightweight on the skin, and it's kind of hard to believe that this is a mineral sunscreen considering the elegance of the texture. The only reason that this formula is second for me to the Clinique is I haven't really tried it under makeup. I feel that that slightly oily, silicone-y feel that it has makes me a little bit too nervous to put it under makeup as someone with oily skin. But this one is fabulous for first thing in the morning when I'm just trying to get myself put together to walk the pooch. Rinse my face off, put a few pumps in my ham, in my ham? in my hand, spread it over the face, and then I can head out the door and let Ray Ray get her first bathroom break of the day. Ray Ray, mi vida. Here she is. <laughs> Very warm from soaking up those vitamin D rays underneath the window here right at my feet while I'm filming. Are you wearing your sunscreen? I think that's a no. Next on the list is the Josie Marin Argan Daily Moisturizer with an SPF of 47. This one is in the box because this is my backup. This used to be my go-to everyday sunscreen unless I was wearing makeup for quite some time and then I discovered the Clinique a few months ago and that's been my go-to. But I still really like this one and I will be using this bottle at some point. This formula is fabulous, especially if you have dry skin because it does have the argan oil in there. It leaves you with a very radiant luminous finish because of that oil. As someone with oily skin, I did find I sometimes would have to dab my face a bit after applying it or even just put on some translucent powder if I wasn't going to be wearing any makeup. I never have worn this up under makeup. Similarly to how I've never worn this one under makeup, it would just be a little bit too much oil, a little bit too slick for me to feel comfortable applying makeup on top as someone with oily skin. But I do still really love this sunscreen. I love that it comes in this big four ounce bottle if you, do, if you choose to get it. It does come in smaller bottles as well. This uses a combination of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. This also comes in a tinted formula, but I have found that the regular formula without the tint actually leaves no cast, whereas the tinted formula, strangely enough, does leave a cast. And that's something I have found with a few different brands where they'll have an untinted formula and a tinted one. And more often than not, the tinted formula, because the tint is just far too light for my brown skin, that's the one that'll leave me looking ghostly. And then the regular formula either works for me or doesn't as well. In this case, the regular formula works great. I've got an old skincare routine video, my morning skincare routine video that I'll link here where you guys can actually see me applying it and you can see how it looks after it's on my skin. Despite having oily skin, I did find that this one really, the, the sheen that it leaves on my skin from the argan oil in it just made me look really well hydrated and youthful in a weird way. So it might not be for everyone, especially if you have oily skin, but I still love it. and. Honestly, even though I probably will still mostly stick to this because this is a better value for money and I can get it in a bigger size, this probably will still stay in my rotation. Next is a newer one to my rotation, which is the Kane and Austin Prime and Protect Mattifying Primer with broad spectrum SPF 50. So this is a mattifying primer and sunscreen in one. It uses zinc oxide for its uh, sun protection factor. This has been my go-to for when I know I'm going to be putting on makeup and I need to have a matte face that day. So basically, on camera gigs. This is the sunscreen that I am wearing today. I had a co-hosting gig earlier today and with studio lighting, my skin needs to be matte as fuck. If not, I will look like a wax statue. And I've really loved this product because it really does do both of the things I need. It gives me that mineral sun protection and it is indeed a mattifying primer. It has a somewhat powdery finish after you apply it and the texture is somewhat moussey on the skin when you're actually rubbing it in. This does have a tint to it and as I mentioned with the last sunscreen, the Josie Marin that comes in tinted and untinted, it does leave a little bit of a 
a little bit of a cast on my skin. Nothing too much to worry about, particularly since I only use this when I'm going in on top with makeup anyway. But I would not say that this is as invisible as the sunscreens that I've mentioned prior to this so far. Following that, we have the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Pure Mineral Sunscreen Moisturizer with an SPF of 40. I have also mentioned this at some point before. This is what I used to use as my under makeup sunscreen before discovering these two. So nowadays, if I know I'm gonna be wearing makeup, I can use this, but if I know I need to be matte, I'll use this. This is a rather thick formula because I guess it is marketed as a sunscreen moisturizer. Despite the thickness, I didn't find it particularly moisturizing. I felt like it's uh, it's slightly heavy on the skin, but I still felt the need to put on a proper moisturizer underneath, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I didn't feel like it was actually hydrating my skin. And this is also the, the type of formula that you really have to work into the skin, otherwise you will feel like it's leaving a cast, but if you continue to work it in, the cast goes away. Again, this has an SPF of 40, and this uses a combination of titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. It's First Aid Beauty, so this is a fragrance-free formula, although I think they are selling a few products now that do have fragrance, which is a damn shame. But I feel like this one is a pretty good value for money. First Aid Beauty generally has very reasonable price points, so you can check this out at either Ulta or Sephora or pretty much anywhere that sells First Aid Beauty. Give it a swatch, really work it in on your skin, and the cast does go away for me. Again, with all these, I can't promise that it won't leave a cast, but they don't really leave a cast on me in most cases. Here we have the Bare Minerals Prep Step Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Mineral Shield Daily Prep Lotion. This one is also designed to be used under makeup if you like, or just used on its own. This uses a combination of the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. This is another one that you have to be sure to shake. It even has the shaker ball inside for you. This one leaves a slight cast on me, slight. However, the bottle is 40 mils, so it's 1.35 fluid ounces, which means you're getting more in this one than you are in this one. So even though I like this one better, this is a better value for money. This one also looks like it has some some of those self-adjusting pigment thingies in it. So I think that's what helps it to leave a minimal to no cast, depending on your skin tone. The cast it leaves on my skin is probably not noticeable to anyone but me. So I'm still using this one on days when I'm not wearing makeup. I'll just whack it on my skin and at least I know my skin is protected. And if I look a little bit pale, I'm probably the only one who notices. Another sunscreen at a lower price point and best value for money out of all these is one that I don't have to show you guys, and that is called the Kiki sunscreen, K-E-E-K-I. The Kiki sunscreen, I believe, comes in an SPF of 30 and an SPF of 45. I first discovered it at Whole Foods, but after using it, which I used for at least a year before I started to find other ones that I liked a bit better, I ended up purchasing it online whenever I needed to re-up because it was cheaper. As with the rest, it is a completely mineral-based sunscreen, but it does contain fragrance. It has a banana scent. To be honest with you, when I first swatched it on my arm at the Whole Foods, I found the banana scent to be absolutely nauseating. So I didn't even purchase it that first day, but it was the first sunscreen that was mineral-based that I found that really did vanish into my skin and didn't leave a cast. So I ended up deciding to purchase it and hope that I would get used to the banana scent, which I did. The Kiki sunscreen also contains coconut oil, which was the other strike against it. This was back when I was first committing to using only mineral-based sunscreen. So at the time, I didn't really have any other options. I hadn't found anything else that disappeared into my skin. So I decided to just give it a go, knowing that coconut oil is one of the most comedogenic, meaning pore clogging oils there are. And of course the banana scent because I hate fragrance in my skincare. So I used the Kiki sunscreen for at least a year and then eventually I ended up finding the Josie Marin, which is what I moved on to after that. However, because the Kiki is such a good value for money, that is the one that I tend to use on my body. Right now I've got this one by Clinique, which I showed you guys a moment ago, but once that runs out, I'll probably go back to the Kiki for protecting my body skin because it's just so much less expensive and it's a better value. And I'm far less concerned about fragrance and coconut oil on my body. I mean, I'll happily apply coconut oil to my body, just not my face. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, for fuck's sake, they're literally hammering directly under the floor of my bedroom right now and then jackhammering outside. So close to being done. 
Okay, clearly it is time for me to wrap this up. So that will do it. Those are my recommendations of sunscreens that are mineral based and work with women of color, or at least this woman of color. Let me get out of here because all this noise is pissing me off severely and it's making it impossible for me to continue filming. So sorry about all this and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. That's a, that's a nappy headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs>